with the Moon Bears record sitting at 2-4, it is becoming apparent that the chances that we will make any kind of meaningful bowl game or go on a winning run to end the season are not looking that great. So we have two games here in today's episode. We have a Power 4 opponent, so that one we are not going to be projected to win against Wake Forest, and then followed by an undefeated Rice, who are currently 6-0. and But we can look forward to the next season in recruiting, and starting off we have a visit scheduled for Johnny Swartz, a three-star gem running back who would definitely immediately slot in as our starter next year, so that is exciting. And then we have a few other one stars here in Tuggle, a right end. And the one stars I've seen in this game, uh, they have a lot of range of what they can come in as, as low as like 40 overall, and as sometimes high, uh, as high as like 60. So we'll have to see with some of these one stars whether they make an impact immediately in year number two. So although our team is mostly seniors, we do have around 35 underclassmen who will be returning as well, as I think some of the seniors didn't get to play at all this year, so they should be automatically redshirted. So we'll have to see how some of these recruits uh, fit into our team next year, but there's definitely plenty of space open, so we just advanced the week. No commitments after week number six, but we do have a few pl uh, players who are now interested, so Tim Kaufman is currently not being pursued by anyone else in the country right now. And we will definitely take a three-star center, and the fact that he's from New York is uh, beneficial for that race. We also have a two-star center from New Jersey, so even closer to home, we can pitch him on that home visit as well. And then we have Kicker. Um, this Kicker I'm not too excited about. I think he has really low kick power, but I just haven't had the ability to really go after anyone else. So I think I will bring him in for a visit just to get someone on the roster. We do need to replace our starting Kicker, Kane, but uh, that might be a rough spot next season. We have the two-star Evan Marshall, who is not... Well, well, he's getting scouted by a few other different teams, but not they're not putting a bunch of points into him, so I think we do, will end up scheduling the visit on him. So let's jump into this game against Wake Forest. As we are actually hosting them at home, that's kind of surprising, but I think that's just part of the default schedule. As so they're actually highlighting uh, Claiborne, the running back for them. Bachmeyer is the quarterback for Wake Forest, one of their star players, but he's going down. Ali McCrary, who's been really impressive this season, basically their only defender who can consistently get to the quarterback, making the early down play. So that'll set Wake Forest up on a third and 11, and they're not going to be able to convert here. Moon Bears will get the ball. Going to jump through this game a little quickly, so we're going to start off here at midfield as Doyle's going to catch this one break free inside the 20. Go the Moon Bears driving here, and this is going to be Peaks catching the ball. Getting us into a first and goal, trying to go for it. All Bowers cannot come down with it. Let's jump forward to third down. As Kim looking to go to the end zone, targeting Bowers again. But there's two guys there to block him off. We will end up with some points, though. So a nice first drive. We will start off with the lead in this game. As the Demon Deacons, who I'm just realizing, have basically the opposite of our color scheme, which was not intentional. But here goes Claiborne, getting them down to the 30. Now Bachmeyer will look to throw here. He's going to find his man. Get down to the 10. And here goes Claiborne up the middle. We do keep him out here. we got to hold one from one more play. We're not going to be able to. Touchdown for the Demon Deacons. 
and the catch by Taylor Morin will give Wake Forest the lead here early in the first quarter. Now back with the Moon Bears here on second down, throwing to Bowers. He's going to run outside the end zone, picking up six. Now Kim, he's got his man Peters. He ran out of the backfield, and the linebacker did not play it correctly. Touchdown for the Moon Bears as we respond quickly. Ten to seven here with five minutes left remaining in this half. Here goes Morin, the guy who just caught the touchdown, running all over our defense there. Setting up with first down from the 22. Only a few there. Leading to a huge third down for us. Bachmeyer with nothing, and he will just toss it into the dirt. They will settle for the field goal, and it is a tie game. The Moon Bears end up going three and out, so I just cut the drive out. Wake Forest now with the ball. Bachmeyer throwing. Huge pickup there. Morin again on the catch. A few plays later, it's a third down and 13, but it's not going to matter. They will end up converting the long First down attempt. We're under just under a minute here in this half. This Wake Forest is looking to get into the house. 35 seconds left diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Wake Forest. As I don't know why every player in this game hits the Heisman after their touchdown, but Donovan Green runs the slant and the dive. And that'll set us up here. Down seven, heading into the half. So far in the first half, we have not been able to run the ball at all. Only 19 yards on the ground. But it's only led to a deficit of seven. So let's try to get that back here. Here we are in the second half. Kim throwing over the middle. He has Brock, but he drops it. Brock has been one of our best players so far this year. This time, Kim just can't even hit him off of the corner route, setting up a 51-yard field goal. I don't even know why I thought we could hit that. The kick goes back to the media people standing in the back corner of the end zone. So nothing for us on that one. Let's jump back to Wake Forest here. Here goes Claiborne cutting this one back. Quincy Reed cannot catch him. I don't think anyone on our team is going to be able to. Touchdown, Wake Forest. That's just an impressive run by Claiborne. That'll set us back two scores. We got to get something going here, but it's a third down for us, and the pressure is too much for Kim to handle Kendron Wayman on the sack. That'll lead to the Deacons getting the ball. And after a few plays, they're already in the red zone. Here goes Claiborne trying to replicate that run from the touchdown, but here he goes with a wide open hole up the middle. He'll be just too short. First and goal. Handing off to him, and he's got the room. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for Desmond Claiborne. As we are now down three scores. Here's a look at the top 25 as it is that time to start looking at the potential playoff bracket. Ohio State, USC, Oklahoma State, and Georgia are the top teams in season number one. Let's head back to the game. Moon Bears pick up the first down off of that play. But a few plays later, it is a third down. And down by three, this might be the game on the line here, really. And just too much pressure to again. Wayman, another sack to end the drive. Fourth and 18, we actually have to go for it here. This time, Kim gets a little bit of time. He maybe has Julio Young. 
but that one is going to be swatted down. So with three, so up by three scores, Wake Forest can essentially um, take a large chunk of this time off as they pick up a big play right there as their quarterback Bachmeyer passes 2,000 yards on this season. But now they are in run out the ball mode or they could just throw it to the end zone. Claiborne has two on the ground and now one through the air. And yeah, we can pretty much say goodnight to this game. The final score, 38 to 10, Wake Forest. And they really could have punched it in there at the end, even run up the score even more. But And you know, at least we can say we played one good half of football here. But the second quarter complete or second half completely killed us as Claiborne ran for 193 and two two touchdowns on the ground had that last one in the air just to kind of stunt on us a little bit. Let me just quickly take a look at some of the stats. P uh, Harvey Peters, that throw and catch by Peters in the first quarter was basically our only highlight of this game. And defensively, um, we basically just had the one sack by McCrary and then Irving Morris came into the game and had a sack as well. Bachmeyer, almost a perfect day for him. Claiborne, we already know that. And Warren and Green for Wake Forest had the touchdowns. And defensively, they were just completely blowing up our backfield the whole game. Only two sacks, but uh, I think it was nine TFLs. And after this game, we get some really good news. Jose Najvar who is looking to be our star quarterback next season, has committed to the team. So we already have Artie Cleveland. He is a two-star gem, but with only 84 throw power, I don't really know how uh, how big his impact would be on this team. Najvar has a significantly better arm, better um, ability to run, and we basically took every other quarterback off the board because I'm, I'm fine with just bringing in those two guys for right now. But we schedule a visit for a wide receiver, so maybe a target for Najvar. And looking, and here we have a tight end, so another target uh, potentially if we can secure it. That's really all the recruiting. That's really all the recruiting for that week. But now we have an undefeated Rice. I said earlier in the episode they were six and zero. They won their game, and now they are seven and zero. Not a Power 4 school, but still one of the best uh, non-Power 4 schools in the country, which they could get a bid into the playoffs if they are one of the best group teams. And they're currently not ranked, which I was surprised about. So I think they might come into this game with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and try to make a statement here to get ranked. Because if you're 8-0, you got to be ranked at that point. Uh, Martin Kim looking to go over 2,000 passing yards on this season. And let's jump into the game. I'm not playing this one. I'm just going to be spectating here. Because the last time I spectated a game, we got our first win against Buffalo. So trying to see if the computer can uh, gin up some magic here against Rice. But that is not a great way to start the game. As here comes the Owls. Dean Connors, the running back, their star player on offense. As he will go into motion. Throwing over the middle. Pickup of 15. About. Here's a third down for Rice, but he's got his man open on the side. He sheds one tackle. Down to the 15 is Warner. Oh, no, Warner is the quarterback, actually. And there goes Connors bringing them down to the five. Second down on the goal line. And that one didn't even look difficult. Touchdown, Rice. They will strike first in this game. Dalen Alexander must be the backup. And 
the Moon Bears now back on the ball. Can the CPU put together a drive? It is not looking good here already. Third down for Kim, rolling to his left. He has Bowers, but maybe the rain caused him to drop it. I don't know. A three and out for the Moon Bears. But here's a good play for us. We get, we hit Warner in the backfield. Second and long, looks like the tight end, maybe, but that's going to set him to a third and seven, going over the middle and under throwing the ball. This is Hunter Webb, the free safety, completely cuts off the underthrown ball and gives the Moon Bears a shot to uh, tie this game up. So from about midfield, this one going to Doyle. That's going to lead us to the second quarter. Now Kim going deep, and he's going to give it right back. Picked off by Rice, and is this going to go all the way? It is. Ray Bra could not catch him. And that is an 82-yard pick six. And what a swing here in this second quarter as Kim just does not time this route right at all, and the defender was all over it. Let's see if we can respond. Here's a nice run by Peters, picking up about 13. Now Kim with a third and 11. Buying time, and that one was either well overthrown or he threw it out of bounds. Here comes the field goal team, and Kane has just been terrible all season for us as that is another missed field goal. Although we're going to need more than field goals in this game. Three minutes left for Rice. Here comes the play action going down is Warner. This is Quincy Reed coming off, uh, coming all the way from the safety position to sack the quarterback. And he has a few sacks on this season, so the defensive back Blitzing has been pretty effective for us. Here goes Warner, and he's going to get the first down on that play. Third down, and throwing that one into the dirt. So we held him to a field goal at least. They will end up getting that. But still, that means we're down three scores here. Two minutes left. We're going to have to get something going here before the half. Kim hesitates for a second, and he goes down, losing 12 on the sack to Percy. And right as he was about to release it, he probably could have got the incomplete on that, but held on to it for some reason. Third down and long. Peters is not going to be able to pick that one up. And Rice is calling the timeouts. 40 seconds left. They're already at the 20, but they don't get anything on that drive. Rice will take the points and extend their lead to 20. As we have looked abysmal outside of a few plays. And the one uh, interception, there's been basically nothing to write home about from this game. And let's head into the second half. Rice is going to be picked off. This is Frankie Flores. The first play of the second half, and that is exactly the spark that we need here. The senior linebacker just plops that one out of the air. And that'll give us a shot here. Trying to go with the screen play. Here's Bowers picking it up, shedding one tackle. Down to the seven. Nice play. Goal to go for the Moon Bears. This is going to be Brock, the touchdown king here in season number one. He will get us on the board here. And we can't ask for a better way to start this second half. Let's jump back into the Owls' drive. They're on a third down and long, but they're going to end up picking that one up. 
Now here on a second down, their running back Connors goes right up the middle. And after a view gets the first down. Now Warner looking to the end zone. And we had just no one near their wide receiver. Or I guess the tight end, Bowden Grown. As we were just completely smoked on that play. They're going to actually go for two to make it a full 21 points. But they're not going to get it. So only a measly 19 up they are here in the third quarter. Kim now throwing across the middle. The capture card glitched, but it's still an interception. That's going to be taken back. Play Wyatt, the second pick six of the game. And really, we could have maybe rode some of that momentum, but the pass just goes the other way, and they've gotten 14 points off of bad throws by Kim in this game. So back with the ball, the Moon Bears take over. Peters has nothing on that. Third down and 12. Here goes Peters. He has one man to beat. He's not going to be able to do it. Fourth down as here's a look, updated look at the top 25 as Eric Henderson's former team, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, have somehow snuck into the top 25. So we'll have to take a look at that as the season goes on. Third down here for Rice. Connors. Nothing there. The long field goal attempt by the Owls. It is no good. And at this point, I meant to do this on the last drive, but after throwing two pick sixes, I decided to just give someone else a chance. And Jay Abbott is the only non-senior quarterback on our team right now. And we have those two new guys coming in. So the quarterback room will be Najvar, Cleveland, and um, this guy right here, Jay Abbott, next year. That'll be the three guys um, that will be looking to jockey for that starter. And immediately as we put him into the game, we almost get a touchdown on a single play. This one's going to Keontae Tyson, who I also put in the game to uh, replace Peters. as Jay Abbott makes a statement here. Now he is currently redshirted and I'm gonna make sure he does not play in the four games. So he will be a redshirt freshman uh, heading into next year. And again, we'll have to see whether he has he plays a role on this team going forward. But because Keontae Tyson ran the long play, uh, Peters actually comes back into the game and kind of vultures the touchdown. So that's kind of funny. and a diving touchdown, as we've seen everyone do all year. Four minutes left. Rice, if they want to, they can basically just run out this game, and they are going to take it all the way to the end zone. So basically, we are in back-to-back -back blowouts, although this one has been, I guess, a little bit better uh, in this one. Three minutes left. Can Jay Abbott impress us to maybe put him in the starter conversation for next year as he immediately throws the interception? And they are waving goodbye. And yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up this game. Connors with the first down. He can end this one. He jukes. And don't tell me he's going to go all the way. That is insane. There was absolutely no reason to do that. And he hits the gritty to top it all off. We are just getting absolutely disrespected. I will remember this. We will face Rice again in the future. As the final score will be 47-14. to 14. I think the rest of the episodes this year will also be double headers. As I'm excited for, you know, as I'm getting these recruits, I'm really excited just kind of end the season and start over again next year. But that is going to do it 
for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you stuck around this long, make sure to subscribe and like the video, and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.